I live in Liverpool currently. I've moved from the south up to Liverpool for university. Um, and to see a Conservative MP stand there and have the audacity to say that you have put money into Liverpool. Liverpool is a world-class city. It's absolutely nothing to do with you and everything to do with European f finances and projects. That city was built from, from, from ruins. If, if we're being honest, Liverpool was in ruins, especially after the end of the Thatcher government. Margaret Thatcher wanted to leave the city to decline. She wanted to leave that city to the point where it was in such ruins it was uninhabitable. If it wasn't for the EU money, Liverpool would not exist in the capacity that it does now. So do not dare stand on national TV and praise yourself for that city because you have nothing, nothing to be Elliot, proud of in that city. Elliot, Let me make I my second point. The I deprivation disagree. in Ireland has not happened overnight. It has not happened in the last week. Ireland has not collapsed. Northern Ireland has not become deprived overnight. It has been deprived for the entire time you have been in government. So why is it suddenly now when Theresa May needs to cling on to power? Because that's what she's doing. Let's not kid ourselves. Let's not joke. Let's not lie and say this is in the national interest. It's directly in your interest. Why now, after seven years of power, are you so interested in inject injecting one billion pounds of public money? It's not conservative money. It is public money that could be distributed to mental health nurses, to, to schools, to public sectors. But no, because you want to cling to power because you have got a woman who does not understand the electorate, does not understand the message she's been given by the public. She has now bribed the Northern Irish Assembly with a billion pounds to keep her into power. Justify that for me now, please. Well, that money, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, mental health services. Uh, Northern Ireland still has the highest... What, I asked you to do, what I've asked I, you to do I'm is justify Elliot, one I'm, billion I'm pounds... Ask, to I am North... asking your question. No, you're not. You're doing what Tories do, is you're deflecting to other points. It's a simple question. Justify to me, in simple terms, why you think now, after seven years in government, after seven years of austerity, now is the time to give Northern Ireland and nobody else in the country one billion pounds at a point where your government, by your own doing, by your own making, is in crisis. Justify that now. Without uh, saying any Tory sound bites, if you're going to be clear, lay it out in simple layman terms, please, because it's an affront. The, the government has increased spending right across the country, including Scotland, Wales, England. Government expenditure has increased. We have been increasing expenditure in Northern Ireland. And Northern Ireland has some of the most uh, uh, significant issues because of its history. You mentioned me mental health services. It has the highest suicide rate per capita in the whole of the UK. And it's entirely appropriate that we recognise the unique circumstances of Northern Ireland. We are in a coalition, or, sorry, not a coalition, we are in a hung parliament situation. That means that we have to negotiate with other parties, and that means that the policies that the government put forward get adapted and amended uh, in negotiation with those parties. That's what happens mm -hmm. in hung parliament situations. That's very, what we've done. That's all very admirable, and if you were doing it off your own back, if you were doing it, if you'd won this election and you turned around and said, Do you know what? Northern Ireland is so deprived, we need to invest immediately because it's, you know, it's a terrible place, but that's not what's happened. No, we if you'd have, already, if you'd have won a, we have already you, committed to an upturn in One billion pounds would not be going to the Northern Irish Assembly. It just wouldn't be happening because it wouldn't be your priority because at the moment your priority is clinging to power at the detriment to this country. You're an affront to this country. Let him respond then. Our priority is doing what is right for the UK and I have absolutely no doubt that a, uh, a government led by Jeremy Corbyn would have, be, would have been a catastrophe for this a, government. You don't have and a that's mandate. Why, and that's why we have, that's why we have uh, entered into an agreement with another uh, political party in the UK to form a stable government. That's what happens when you have hung parliament situations. And those negotiations have meant that in addition to the additional spending that we are putting into health and public services around uh, the rest of the UK, we are also putting additional spending uh, okay. into Northern Ireland. Okay. Above that, which was already planned for, of course, but that is the byproduct of a uh, hung parliament uh, agreement.